All right, this is the other side of .1x configuration, and this is you know kind of taking a, a break from the data center, and we're moving out there to the edge. We're taking a look at user land. And from a user perspective, there's different ways to get into the network, right? Historically, maybe we didn't have to do anything. We just did DHCP. However, over the weekend, maybe you come in as a user and something has changed. You attach to the network and nothing is happening. Well, what the case is, is we need to enable EAP support on the supplicant. This is either built into your operating system or you could use a third party uh, .1x client. In our case, within the Cisco world, we tend to use Cisco AnyConnect, and this is called Network Access Manager. This is fantastic because it's integrated with all the other Cisco products. When we want to do things like remote access VPN, it's the same client, it's the same interface. So it feels very similar to the users. They log into the network the same way, whether they're on site or remote. They don't know what IPsec is, SSL, .1x, they don't care. Uh, they just know to get on the network, they fire up the AnyConnect client. Um, this is going to give you support for all the different EAP options. Where you take a look at the native OS supplicant, this can typically do a subset of what your AnyConnect client is going to do. See, the AnyConnect client can hook deeper into the OS, and it can take a look at the state or the security posture, and give details to the ASA or Firepower device that discuss, like, hey, this is what's actually happening uh, on the endpoint here. So better visibility, uh, which gives us the ability to make better decisions. Um, either of these can really work. So if you've got a device that's out there in the field and it hasn't been provisioned, you can still bring it in, uh, assuming that you have a .1x supplicant. Most OSs are built uh, with support for this. It's going to come with it natively, but we just have to enable it if it's not turned on already. So when we look at .1x Windows client authentication, there's a good chance that you're going to have a couple Windows hosts in your domain. We'll go ahead and enable machine authentication, and we can ensure that only corporate assets are allowed on the network. Again, this is optional, but the idea is saying, I want to make sure only devices that I've created and I've authorized are allowed in. So we're not only validating user credentials, we're validating machine credentials. Enabling the user authentication allows differentiation of access for different users using the same machine. It also gives us the ability to give different levels of access, like maybe you're the domain administrator, but you're logged into somebody else's computer. I can give different parameters to that particular switch port based on those conditions. So these are all things that I can consider. Remember, the process of combining machine and user authentication is considered by most to the, be the most secure option that we have. Um, you can even do two-factor on the user. So we've got very, very good strength. We've got high confidence that this is a valid user. EAP chaining is what we typically leverage to deploy machine and user-based authentication. So as far as configuring the Windows supplicant itself, uh, you can turn on what's called the wired auto config in Windows. And some older operating systems, you see this called wireless auto config. And this basically gives us EAP support. Now the other half of this is do we trust ICE? And in order to trust ICE, it's got to have that identity certificate. And the identity certificate was issued by a CA server. So it comes down to this question, does the supplicant is trying to come onto the network, do they trust the CA server? If they don't, it's gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna be in trouble. Because when that uh, server side tries to validate itself and we wanna use uh, tunneled eat methods, it's gonna fail. So the way that we would do this is visit that CA server, pull the root certificate down, recall it, it's just the identity certificate for the CA server, and then we basically go into the system and say that that's a trusted root. So here we are under Internet Properties. You've got a field for certificates. And certificate is going to take us into our uh, local certificate store where we can manage certificates. When we talk about trusted root CAs, this is where an identity certificate from other users or other devices is going to be issued from. So we would take our CA server that we've created. Uh, maybe we used Microsoft. Uh, Windows Server, and we just said, let's add a certificate services. Uh, it's a role, there's a wizard, you're up and running in like two minutes. At that point, you can generate certificates, but nobody is going to believe you. Each device that you want to work within that PKI 
needs to trust the CA server. So again, on the CA server, you'll create a root certificate. He signs it himself. And then you go to each device and you install the root. That says trust certificates that came from here. You're basically creating your own DMV, which can issue its own identification. Uh, here we are within Windows Services. And what you may notice is here under Wired Auto Config, this service is disabled. By enabling it, we're going to add support for 802.1x authentication. This is what we're talking about when we say a native supplicant. Windows, Linux, OS X, they've all got .1x clients. Here we are on the actual Ethernet port enabling .1x. We're specifying the eat method that we want to use. Remember, the AnyConnect client is going to have more eat methods available gives you quite a bit more configuration options. But again, this is nice because we don't need any additional software. If you've got a challenge or restriction uh, where you can't add the AnyConnect client, we want to make sure within ICE that we're going to support EAT methods that Windows, Linux, and OS X are willing to support. 